So OTAs and charity softball events and everything that these Philadelphia Eagle guys are going through this offseason, can I make a statement to you guys? These guys really like one another. There is a fondness that's being built with these players on this team that Howie Roseman has put together. Very rarely do you see that in an NFL setting. You see that more in a college setting. But in an NFL setting like that, because of free agency and all the movement, people enjoy going to the Novacare Center now. They enjoy going to work. They enjoy seeing their teammates. They enjoy seeing their roommates. And I mean by roommates, defensive line, wide receivers, offensive line. It's not just the O-line. There is a vibe about the Eagles right now that is contagious. All had a spectacular weekend as we are getting closer and closer to rent being due in September for your Philadelphia Eagles. Dude, I got to tell you, watching the NHL playoffs, NBA finals, I love what's going on right now in sports. All the OTAs, I don't know when people come out and say this, well, we got to wait until September. Anytime you hear that from a sports dude, click the channel, okay? That's layup. You and me sitting around Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 Eastern time, each and every single day, talking about our favorite passions. I've been doing it for 27 years. I have never come on a show and went, I don't know what we're going to talk about. I don't know what to say. What do you want me to say? You want me to make shit up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, man. Hope all had a great weekend. I want to do this today. I want to be positive. I don't want to throw any shade on anybody. I'm going to do everything in my power, not going soft, okay? And no, the Eagles, by the way, welcome aboard people at the Nova Care Center. Thank you very much. Now the Sixers, too. My do hey, by the way, Xander, the Doc Rivers interview. I got Daryl Morey sending me a text message going, dude, that was a great interview. Great stuff. I was like, Daryl, when can you come on? He goes, how about this week? Okay. The general manager of the 76ers. Okay. Why not, Daryl? Sent him a text message. <laughs> Kevin's like this. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Sills. Hang on for a second. Can we please do a DNA check? Positive. Hello, dude. Okay, remember something. There's always something shitty to say about something and someone. I get it. Okay, Kev, I got it. I got it. But I want to start it out here. So OTAs and charity softball events and everything that these Philadelphia Eagle guys are going through this offseason, can I make a statement to you guys? These guys really like one another. There is a fondness that's being built with these players on this team that Howie Roseman has put together, very rarely do you see that in an NFL setting. You see that more in a college setting. But in an NFL setting like that, because of free agency and all the movement, people enjoy going to the Novacare Center now. They enjoy going to work. They enjoy seeing their teammates. They enjoy seeing... Their roommates, and I mean by roommates, defensive line, wide receivers, offensive line. It's not just the O-line. There is a vibe about the Eagles right now that is contagious. Is that from Jalen? Is that from Sirianni? Is that from Howie? Or is that from everybody? It's really contagious now. There is a vibe that makes me do this. These guys are going to go to battle for one another when the shit is thin and you need your boy to go out there and get your back. There is a camaraderie that's starting to form here. And this is where it needs to form. I would rather have what's going on right now with the Eagles than them sitting there going through useless OTAs and those some, sometimes useless reps. And hear this, man, Smitty's going to be a great player. Holy cow, is he great. 
man, I'll tell you what, we got two number ones now. Wow. Just great to be around him. Hey, man, Jalen is really looking good. Hey, by the way, I get it. It's helmets and shorts. Let's not get crazy here. But I'd rather hear that shit than hearing this. Man, I don't know what's going on with Deshaun Watson. Man, I don't know. You know, are we going to be able to talk Aaron Rodgers out of not retiring? Is Brady past this time? That's not what you're hearing in Philly. Dak Prescott having to say that Zeke Elliott has nothing to prove this year. Hey, Dak, do you have anything to – that's not what you're hearing in Philly. You're hearing this. Man, Devontae Smith. Smitty's going to be a great player from A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown and him are now forming this relationship that you just dream. When you bring a veteran in like that, you're hoping that that happens and they forge this relationship. Not only did the Eagles get one of the top flight wide receivers – you now are looking at potentially one of the top flight leaders in the league. There is a different vibe, it seems. It, and it seems tighter now. Didn't Hey, didn't I always think this? The old line's tight. The old line's been tight for what? Seven, eight years? There's really never been another group. Well, the D-line probably in 17. They were a close-knit group. I'm, I'm assuming that I'm... I'm sure when you win a championship, you have to all be on the same page and you have to all look out for each other's back and such. What up, Fred? Appreciate you guys coming along here, man. Yeah, I, I, I mentioned the play calling thing. Great. Nick Sirianni has to be more of a guy who is a delegator now. He's learning how to be a head coach in the NFL. Being a head coach in the NFL is not about being a great play caller. It's about delegating, letting your coaches coach, evaluating talent. Okay? That transition is not that easy, too, going from coordinator to head coach. How many times have we seen it fail? And I, by the way, do I think that that could be playing something into this new closeness to the team? I do. A.J. Brown's leadership right now albeit in helmets and shorts and in OTAs, is contagious. You're seeing it along with Jalen Hurts. Hey, I don't know if that translates into championships. I know it's got to start there. And that's a good sign. How about this? I'd rather have a relationship that Jalen Hurts has right now with A.J. Brown than that relationship that Deshaun Jackson and Donovan McNabb had or didn't. What was that about over the weekend? So Deshaun Jackson basically called out Donovan McNabb because McNabb said he didn't deserve to be a pro bowler at two different positions. I mean, who's Donovan McNabb to say something like that? That's your boy. You should be rooting for him. McNabb's a shitty teammate. It's not just T.O. now. Now it's Deshaun Jackson saying it. Donovan McNabb's downfall was the fact he wasn't a great teammate. I've heard now two players do it. Terrell Owens and Deshaun Jackson. McNabb was not a good teammate. It wasn't. Two guys that he had to rely on. And you're barking out that, I guess on a podcast, Deshaun Jackson called him out. Yeah, I'm became the first NFL player in history to start at two different positions. I'm assuming it was for kickoff or punt return and being a wideout. And Jackson got that honor. And McNabb said, Jesus, really? Him? He don't deserve to be there. Who would say that but a shitty teammate? Who would say that? That's a shitty teammate to say that. Even if it's true, don't say that publicly. Keep that shit to yourself. That's the stuff that got in his way. I completely believe that now. As great as McNabb was, he was his own worst enemy. That's why he didn't win at the ultimate level. And that's winning those Super Bowls and winning numerous championships. Winning numerous NFC championships. Okay? Completely. Don't say that about your teammate. And I thought about those comments versus what I'm hearing with A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts are making it work. 
they, it helps they had a relationship in the past. But look at that dynamic. And they're pulling Smitty along with them. And then you had that dude. More talented. With Terrell Owens. And you're talking shit on both your wideouts. Who would you rather have as your starting quarterback? Jalen Hurts or that? Dude, like I said, you may have those personal opinions about someone on your team. but to, and, and by the way, according to Deshaun Jackson, he, he, he went public with it and said that he even called out Donovan McNabb and he had a problem with him. So again, this is a good sign. Compared to that team, this is why this team is forming a great identity right now in the offseason. And I think it's important. I'm hearing great things, man. How about the way A.J. Brown is going? Man, this kid, Smitty, sky's the limit. What are, what, what, are, what are the things that he's been saying? Sky's the limit. We have two number ones. This kid's so talented. This guy just got $100 million. And all A.J. Brown is doing is throwing complete love and rose petals at the feet of Devontae Smith and creating confidence for the kid. You know, the, it's not that he needs pats on the back, but do you know what is great to hear when you're a young player? That I'm doing the right things to get to where I want to get to in my career. That's what AJ's confirming. He's not, Devontae doesn't need pats on the head. Hey, great job on that. Cat. That's not what I'm saying here. But when you get to the NFL, your path to stardom is clouded. It's totally clouded. You have no idea. I don't care what program you came from. I don't care what program you came from. Because when you get to the NFL, if you don't have leadership around you, you're not seeing how a guy got to a particular point and you don't know. How do you know what due north is? If you have to go due north, how do you know which way it is? That's what you feel like when you get into the NFL. And now you've got a guy in Philadelphia going like this. This kid's doing everything right. Boy, I'll tell you something. He, he, this guy's the limit for this guy. Man, that is so encouraging. Not only did you just, like, it's not drafting a diva. It's drafting a leader. The one thing that we talked about last year, boy, it'd be great to have a veteran in the locker room for the wide receiving core. Boy, I'll tell you what, not only do you have a veteran in the locker room for your wide receiving core, but you may have one of the team leaders and the best players in the league setting the example in your locker room and in your grouping at the wide receiver table. That is so outstanding. Okay. The, okay. That was so outstanding. Yeah, man. And then you got Deshaun Jackson with a problem with Donovan McNabb. Okay. So McNabb had a problem with Jackson and Terrell Owens because he wanted it to be all about him instead of winning ball games. This is where Jalen's, this is where Jalen's intangibles absolutely move ahead of McNabb's. He, he, dude, you think he's ever going to talk shit on Jalen Rager? McNabb would. Okay. It's okay if you I, I've never heard Tom Brady talk shit on any wide receiver he's ever played with. I've never, and for that matter, I've actually never heard Aaron Rodgers say anything about a wide out. Never. I've never heard any of the, I've never heard Peyton Manning say anything about Marvin Harrison or Reggie Wayne or Dallas Clark or Marshall Falk, or Edwin. Ingen I never heard him. I, I heard him his rookie year say something shitty about his O-line. Never happened again. We got to block better. We got to do it. After that, it never happened again because they told him to shut the hell up.
you weren't great either. You had 28 picks your rookie year. I mean, you know, I saw those two stories. One dynamic with a quarterback and Donovan McNabb. And by the way, that's how I'm reading it. You guys were around it. And now you have Deshaun Jackson talking shit on McNabb. T.O. couldn't stand the guy. It's not just one guy now. Hey, if you want to believe that case up in Cleveland with Deshaun Watson, I'm looking at this right here going, hey, here's the second star wide receiver and second Pro Bowl wide receiver talking shit on McNabb. You think it's, what, you think there's a lie to that? I don't think so. What's it in the best interest for Deshaun Jackson to talk shit on McNabb today? It's not what it was. He was asked the question. Guy had a problem with him making the Pro Bowl. What? And all you're hearing over the weekend is A.J. Smith just absolutely just going like this. Hey, man. I so love what I'm seeing. I so love what I'm hearing. You know, and of course, you know, the organization is going to go, oh, my God, Jalen's looking great. He, you know, and, okay, take that shit for a grain of salt, okay? It's helmets and shorts. I get it. But the camaraderie that they're building and the identity that they're building for the football team, you know, speak softly and then carry a gigantic stick in September, that's the kind of identity that they're trying to build right now. Everybody's right now loud because it's June. By the way, you understand we are now a month out and a few weeks away from the start of training camp. You understand that, right? We're like, let's see, four, we're about seven weeks out from training camp. Are you ready to go? If you're not ready today on June 6th, Eh, you know what's funny? Today's D-Day. The celebration of D-Day. Greatest beach on the planet, Omaha Beach. Today's D-Day. One of the greatest moments in civilization, in American history. Storming the beaches of Normandy. 78 years ago today. Thank you. Okay? Today's D-Day. Dude, if you ain't ready right now, you'll never be ready in September. Okay, you'll never be ready in September. Okay? Rico says McNabb has a big ego and was jealous of others getting attention. (laughs) Was he need a pacifier? By the way, Brian Westbrook, I voted for him today. If you go over to my Twitter page, at Dan Celio Show, I voted for Brian Westbrook, your guy, because of you guys. And because I did due diligence and looking up his career, um, he went to Villanova. I voted for him for the College Football Hall of Fame today. You could see my ballot. I posted my ballot. I get a ballot. I'm one of the 100 people who get a ballot who puts in College Football Hall of Famers. And I voted for him to make the Hall of Fame. You get Division I guys and 1AA guys, and you get an opportunity to vote. And I voted Brian Westbrook, um, played at Villanova, and I voted. He was first-team All-American, and I voted for him to um, make the Hall of Fame. So Paul goes, we need the season to start already. Randall, all good, man. Westbrook was great in college at Nova. He was great. He was spectacular. Absolutely spectacular in the NFL. Yeah, Rico, I, you know, and having talked to him and then did some homework on him, I would think this, the two most famous Villanova players have to be Howie Long and him, right? Football players, not the hoop guys. Greg, of course. Of course, he deserves it. And I enjoyed him on my program, too. So we appreciated that. But guys, don't you? Okay. Yeah, Paul, you know, the new um, the new offensive coordinator, it's just about the coach making that transition from being a head coach to, or from coordinator to head coach. 
you know, he's not going to do anything without Nick Sirianni's input when it comes to the game plan, but this is a good sign. It's Sirianni taking more interest in the defensive side of the ball, which he should. That was one of our criticisms last year was the fact that he didn't have that much input in when it came to the play calling. <laughs> Eastside Monster says, hey, Westbrook would have broke your ankles, Big Sills. I'm trying to think. I played against Bo Jackson, Herschel Walker. Um, let's see. Uh, Eric Dickerson. Uh, Walter Payton. Yeah. I don't know, man, about breaking ankles. Those guys were pretty good, too. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, a Philly podcast, I heard that. And that's what John McMullen, who was on our show on Friday, was saying. He kind of took over after the two and five start. And so that, you know, it, it's kind of old news, right? Philly talk podcast. It's kind of old news here a little bit. Bob, thank you, man. Big sales finally get to plug back into your show. Business travel sucks. Bob, it does. Thank you so much for coming aboard. By the way, please hit the like button, guy. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Jones, new era. Number fives need to keep it quiet. As well as DJ. Right, man, don't air that shit out. What's the point? Makes everybody look bad. The organization, the team, the two players. The, you know, I mean, come on, guys. What's the point of that? It what, it what it did was it throws more shade on McNabb's leadership. Okay? Going to my third G Eagle game in October against Arizona Sills. Has me ready to run through a wall. Can't wait. Dude, hey, let me just say this. Canapa, let me say this to you, brother. I think they're going to really do well. I, I loved all the signs that I'm seeing. This is a big sign for me in how they're acting right now. Okay? Togetherness. They're talking about other people on the team. Okay? I did not think A.J. Brown was – how in the world did the Titans let go of a 25-year-old star leader like that? Because you didn't want to pay him four more million dollars on market value when you're talking about top-flight guys? Man, boy, you shortchange what that guy's impact is on a team because I'm seeing it now. Dan, who would be the best quarterback in the NFL right now for the Eagles to run this offense? Josh Allen. Josh Allen. Can you imagine Josh Allen in this offense with that O-line and those wideouts? They could go undefeated. They could go undefeated. Personally, I think the problem that you see with Patrick Mahomes' offense and Andy Reid, they're not consistent enough in the run game. When they lost Kareem Hunt back in the day, after that whole fiasco, they haven't been able to replace that offense in the backfield. He caught footballs out of the backfield. He ran in between the tackles. They've never really had a significant running game since Kareem Hunt left. Kareem Hunt's now in Cleveland with Nick Chubb. Those two guys are dominant at the point of attack with that offensive line, one of the top five units in the league. Now you have a top five quarterback. We'll see when he plays. But you got some good offensive um, firepower in Cleveland. Jesse Sills, do you think Allen is better than Burrow? I do. I do. I do. I, I, I think he's more versatile. I think he can do more. Okay? If you stop the passing game in Buffalo, if you stop the passing game in Cincinnati, well, they have Mixon. Mixon's a good... That's a t it's a and by the way, it's razor thin. I don't I don't think there's this gigantic gap between Joe Burrow and Josh Allen. I do not. Okay, I do not. You think Russell Wilson would be better running this offense? 
Russell Wilson needs to have a running attack. Well, the Eagles are number one in rushing, okay? And they did it by committee. But, but see, here's the problem why Russell Wilson would not be good in this offense. Russell Wilson's not going to get 900 yards rushing. I don't want Russell Wilson with 900 yards rushing, okay? Oh, wait a minute. There, wait, hang, hang, hang on here. Okay. It's like Giselle or Sierra. Man, Sierra's got to be one of the best looking women on the planet. Whew. That's what I, one of the reasons why I wanted Russell Wilson in Philly. So I get to see Sierra more, man. Man. Wow. Sorry, Giselle. I'm a Sierra guy. Oof. She is, I'm one of the top looking women of all time, maybe even too, man. And she seems really cool. Yeah, Davey boy, Wilson, Wilson's not going to rush for 900 yards. He's not. That's not what he does. Bengals have outstanding wide receivers. Sierra or Giselle? Yeah, like I said, it's like two wines. It's like Merlot cake bread and Chardonnay cake bread. Pick one. I'm, I'm a Merlot guy. Okay. I think Rodgers in this offense would be unstoppable. He would Rodgers in any offense, Chris would be unstoppable. Seals, Josh Allen could get hurt running 900 yards. Yeah, well, that's why they're stopping that up there in Buffalo now. They drafted the kid Cook. They're going to try to create more of a running attack. I mean, you can't have him with 78 yards and rushing every game and 350 yards in the air and expect that guy to play 10 years for you. You also got to try to make sure that guy plays 10 years for you. You got an ability to be able to do that. Why run him into the ground? So three years of Josh Allen versus 10 years of Josh Allen if you've got good components around him, okay? Aaron says, well, Devontae Smith have 1,400 yards. I don't know, man. I'll tell you what, A.J. Brown may see to it. Boy, do I love what I'm hearing. I can't, I can't stop raving about it. I can't. I think what the Eagles are doing right now, it reminds me of a championship attitude. These guys here are as thick as thieves here. I mean, they're doing charity events. They're talking highly about one another. They can't wait. They're not over-promising and under-delivering right now, which is great. Let people in the media and let dorks like me do it. They're, they're, they're handling themselves. I think they're handling themselves well. Okay, I do. Don't forget, Gary Cobb, Fox 29, hour 2, 430, where he always sits with us each and every single Monday. Michael, thanks for coming aboard. A.J. Brown, 1,500 yards. Devontae Smith, 1,300. Lewis, if those two numbers come to fruition on what you're saying, um, Jalen Hurts will be in the top five considerations for the most valuable player award. And the Eagles would have won 13 ball games, because with that running attack, you will be unstoppable. I am not a huge fan of quarterback running around carelessly. And that's what I feel, Josh Allen. Philip, did you watch that game with Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen in the playoffs? That's not exactly what that was. Seth says this, Howie is definitely building something special here. You know what, Seth? I don't know. Like I said, what I'm saying right now, you know, this, this is all good stuff here. And like I said, it's June 6th. But what I love about it is how they're dealing with each other, how they're around one another, and they enjoy each other's presence. That is so great to hear. That is great to hear, man. That's the kind of stuff you hope when you give a guy $100 million and you bring him into your organization. How many of you are doing this? Uh, another Diva Whiteout coming in. This guy's going to be a headache. They always are. They always bitch about their touches. They always bitch about their targets. They always bitch about their numbers. That's not what I'm hearing out of this guy. I'll tell you what, if I'm Mike Vrabel, the head coach of the Titans, and I'm hearing what this guy's doing with my other young players on the team and my quarterback, 
and my head coach and dealing with the new play caller. Dude, I tell you, I'd run right up to my front office and go, for $4 million a year, we let that guy walk out the room at 25 years of age. That's not a good business proposition. The number one thing you're trying to do is accumulate great talent on your team. Help your quarterback. Move the sticks. That's why Watson wanted out of Texas. He didn't want to play with the Texans. You're moving DeAndre Hopkins? You just gave me $180 million and you moved DeAndre Hopkins. How does that even make sense? I'm getting now why it makes sense because you can't keep a top flight wideout and quarterback on the same roster. You know, where do you see that today? It's going to be interesting to see what happens in Los Angeles with Cooper Cup. You're going to pay him $25 million? Well, they're not really paying Matthew Stafford top dollar right now. They got him kind of in a lower um, tax bracket when it comes to his base salary, giving him more on signing bonus. So maybe that's how they're working it. They, they use a different line of credit in Los Angeles through the Rams. Jordan Davis admitted he likes cannolis. Who in their right mind wouldn't like cannolis? Are you kidding me? That's great. Oh, my God. I knew, I, I knew when I picked him for the Eagles to draft, and he's saying now he likes the Philly cannoli. That's exactly what I'm talking about here. Congratulations to you. Good morning, Big Sills. Hoping Mario Goodrich Brooks make the roster. I can't wait to see the battles in July. Pistachio cannoli is the best, Lewis. See, I like chocolate chip cannoli, man. I like a hard shell, no soft shell. Don't give me that soft shell stuff. I like a hard, crisp shell, okay? Hard, crisp shell. The balance has to be good in the middle, too, you know? Not heavy on the cream over, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes when you get a little heavy on that stuff in the middle, it generates the uh, the crust a little bit, okay? Xander's like this, Sills, I need a timeout. You're talking cannolis. You could probably go for five hours. Chocolate chip cannoli? That's fascism right there, homeboy. Nobody eats a chocolate chip cannoli. Nobody, okay? Nobody in their right mind in Philadelphia, no Italian from South Philly would eat a chocolate chip cannoli. Nobody. Nobody would eat a chocolate chip cannoli. Hey, I have a right to ban you for that. Excuse me? What is a ca- I got to take a time out. I can't take <laughs> hold, hold on. My head hurts here. Hold on. Hold on for a minute. Okay. He doesn't know what a cannoli is. All right. Hey, I want to hit a little bit more on this topic here with McNabb and Deshaun Jackson. Not a lot of people are hitting on it. I want to hit on this here. A little bit more on what's going on around the NFL as well. Some college football news. Please hit the like button. My friends, you know, time of the show right now, our friends at Morgan & Morgan are one of the most important things you could possibly do. And that is finding an attorney if you are hurt or injured on the job. Listen, that is the most important thing for your family's compensation is making sure that you have the right firm behind you. They are the biggest size matters. There's not a law firm, casualty firm in the United States of America that gets you the compensation that you need. Past 30 years, over $13.5 billion in compensation for their clients. Look, with over 800 attorneys strong at Morgan & Morgan, offices in Philly, New York, Florida, across the country, are going to do battle for you to make sure you and your family get that fair compensation. Call them at 800-512-1600. Look, call us free. The consultation's free. 800-512-1600. That's 800-512-1600, open 24-7, seven days a week. And when you call Morgan & Morgan, you tell them Big Sills sent you. After a car crash, the big insurance companies you see advertising on TV, they may try to downplay your case and might say, it's only a fender bender or it's just a herniated disc. I worry that some law firms fall for this BS. Not us. We put ourselves in your shoes and ask, what would it be like to be in your pain for the rest of our lives? A million dollars wouldn't be enough for me. There's only one Morgan & Morgan. For the people.com.